Is This The Life We Really Want will be the Pink Floyd co-founder's first album since 1992's Amused to Death. The album, which has been produced and mixed with Radiohead producer Nigel Godrich, sees Waters collaborate with musicians including Godrich, Arrangement, Sound Collages, Keyboards, Guitar, Gus A. Eifert, Bass, Guitar, Keyboards, Jonathan Wilson, Guitar, Keyboards, Joey Waronker, Drums, Roger Manning, Keyboards, Lee Pardini, Keyboards, and Lucius, Vocals, with Jess Wolf and Holly Lessig, according to Rolling Stone. The new album is expected to arrive on June 2nd in vinyl, CD and digital formats. It will be available for pre-order starting April 21st. Is This The Life We Really Want? Features 12 new tracks from the highly political singer-songwriter, including one track based on a poem by Palestinian poet Mahmoud Darwish. The new songs contain, unflinching commentary on the modern world and uncertain times, according to a press release. Waters told Rolling Stone in February that he has drawn inspiration from the antipathy he feels towards the Trump administration, as well as a dramatic radio play he had been writing before working on his new album about Oman and his granddaughter investigating why children were being killed in faraway lands. Two or three of the songs from that idea are on this album, he said. Nigel Godrich persuaded me that for the purposes of a rock and roll record, which is what this is, he felt my theatrical idea, I'd written the whole thing as a radio play, was less than ideal. Waters told Rolling Stone magazine that the song Wait For Her was inspired by an English translation of Lesson from the Kama Sutra, Wait For Her, by Darwish. Waters will be embarking on his Us Plus Them North American tour, which kicks off May 26 in Kansas City, Mo. Concerts around the US and Canada run through October 28, when the tour wraps in Vancouver. Waters became leader of the progressive and psychedelic band Pink Floyd after original guitarist and vocalist Sid Barrett left the band in 1968. He remained at the helm until he left the band 1985. His lyrical talent was at the heart of Pink Floyd's legendary albums, The Wall and Dark Side of the Moon, The Moon, 